Hey Tingland fam, recently we hit 200,000 subscribers, which is insane in the membrane. We are so grateful to you guys, our Tingland fam. And all I really want to say is let's continue making magic and spreading wholesomeness through the world through cubing. So here's a Q&A with questions submitted by you guys. If you weren't able to submit something, just make sure you subscribe so you don't miss things like this in the future. Last thing before we get into questions, this will also be a video of the very first time I did the Guildford challenge just today actually. And that is solving all of the official WCA puzzles except for the blind events at one go. I don't think I was prepared for the challenge of swapping between one puzzle and another, but here it is. All right, let's get to the questions. First one, when do you think you'll get a bigger shoe size? Um, I think since hitting the age of like 18, my feet have not changed in size, so probably never. What would you rather, go 10 years back in time and compete with the Gain 11 and Pro, or go 20 years ahead in time and buy the best cube there is and then come back to this time period and compete with it? Um, look, I do think that 20 years is a long time for innovation to happen, so we could see some amazing cubes in the year 2041 but being able to go back to 2011 and compete like I probably rank pretty high with my current times but then again that also doesn't seem totally fair to the people at that time so I don't know, maybe the future. What cube did you have low or no expectations for until you tried it? I'm not sure if there are any cubes that have really exceeded my expectations. I generally am quite optimistic with every new release, so I'm usually, if anything, a little bit disappointed afterwards. But maybe the MGC4? Like, I just thought it'd be, you know, a good 4x4, but it really quickly became my main. At what point do you think cubing hardware will just be at its peak and almost every cube will be literally perfect? My answer to this is definitely never, because there are always new ways we can innovate and new things that we can create. So as I said before, really optimistic about the future. I think it'll just keep on getting better. Of course, the law of diminishing returns states that improvements will probably become smaller and smaller. But again, you never know what breakthroughs are around the corner. If you had to make a YouTube channel that wasn't about cubing, what would it be about? Congrats on 200Ks. Thank you. It would almost definitely be about music. I have actually considered this year making a second channel devoted entirely to piano, piano covers or original compositions. I love playing the piano and I think I'm fairly good at it, but it's mostly just been time that's prevented me from doing so. But I mean, let me know in the comments if you think that's something that you'd be interested in. How long does the average Ting Man video take to produce, including planning, filming, editing, etc.? Great question. There's a huge range. Um, there are some videos that I can churn out within maybe just one or two hours if I'm just gunning to get it done really quick, uh, and some that will take I don't know, upwards of 30 or 40 hours. I think if I had to generalize, it might be something like around two hours of work needs to go in for every one minute of video. Um, and that includes planning and scripting and editing and, and all that stuff. In terms of the video that took me the longest to make, ooh, that's a tricky one. I don't think I know which one's the actual longest, but for this year at least, it might've been uh, my Townsville competition vlog. Um, or maybe that video I made about why so many speed cubers seem to me musicians. That just took a while because I had so much fun interviewing all those people that our chats just went for a really long time and then I had so much footage that I had to cut down. Dana Yi asks, how do you come up with awesome ideas and stay motivated to continue making videos? I swear you just hit 100K. I'll be excited to see 200. Thank you, Dana. I think it helps that I've always liked making videos. And so even though I do get tired um, at times of maybe producing too much content uh, and I just want to take like a little break, it doesn't take long before I'm sort of itching to get back into it again. In terms of ideas, I think like like many other people, uh, I have a list of ideas that I just keep and I think I get like a new idea probably every other day and maybe a really good idea like every other week. <laughs> a couple of things I've been learning in this area though, um, one, um, if I think I have an amazing video idea, I like to sort of sit on it for a few days because if after a little while I realize, oh, that wasn't actually that great, then, you know, I shouldn't have proceeded with it um, initially. But if after a few days or even a few weeks, I'm still like, yeah, that, that video is going to be amazing, then that's definitely one that I should make. And the second thing is that there are actually a lot of video ideas that seem really, really cool in concept or in theory. But if you imagined yourself watching someone else make it, like you probably wouldn't sit through that whole video. Like it'd be interesting for the first like 30 seconds once the premise is laid and then you're like, okay, that's cool. Let's go on to something else. So a really good video idea may not actually become a good YouTube video, if that makes sense. Congrats, Tingman. What were your expectations for competitions before you attended your first one? How did the experience prove your expectations right or wrong? As you probably already know, we have a whole video on our first cubing competition experience. I think I expected that it would just be full of super, super fast cubers and I'll be really intimidated and just be very slow in comparison. I mean, there were a lot of really good cubers and obviously at your first comp, you would rank quite low. 
I soon found out that that's not really the point of competitions and if that's sort of what you go into it for then you're almost definitely gonna go away disappointed. I found out that competitions are so much more fun if you don't go into it like super obsessed with your times. Try and you know get to know people, try out different puzzles and yeah just tell yourself it's gonna be fun and it will probably come true. Hey Ming, my question is, how do you manage your library sizes during editing and keep your timeline clean? Thanks. I don't know if I keep my timeline very clean. I do like to do color coding of all my different um, clips and stuff in the timeline so that I visually can sort of categorize stuff. Otherwise, library sizes, I mean, it's just large hard disks, I guess. I think I'm one of the few Cuban YouTubers who consistently uh, makes videos in 4K. I realize that most videos are just consumed on like small phone screens, but I just like the quality of 4K. Um, so yeah, a lot of hard disks, my friend, a lot. Anthony asks, have you stayed motivated to practice cubing with the lack of competitions recently? And if so, which events slash puzzles? Great question. Universally, everyone needs that sort of motivation of a goal and a competition is a great thing. So yeah, definitely having competitions canceled has been quite discouraging. Um, I know that I was, for example, really getting into 6x6 and 7x7 in the middle of this year because I had competitions coming up where those were the events that I really wanted to improve in. And then when the comps got cancelled, I pretty much stopped practicing those cubes. Uh, but I never fully stopped cubing. And I think it's because uh, I am a cuba. Like, you know, it's, it's what I do when I sort of have a few minutes. Oh, I should say, Anthony, I'm really glad. You didn't ask me about um, blind practice because, yeah. That's been very sad. Any tips for parenting? You have a strong connection with Ola and I'm hoping to build one like that with my future kid. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. Um, I think I think the fact that you're already asking this question is, is a good sign. I think that a good parent is one who is quite intentional about it. And I mean, look, there are a lot of really, really great fathers and mothers who are not, you know, reading all these parenting books and going to courses and stuff. Like it's sort of a bit of a natural thing, but I do think that every parent needs to think about it. They need to actually make decisions of like, I'm not gonna be this kind of parent or I am gonna be this kind of parent. So I'm very grateful, for example, to my wife, who's uh, very honest with me and I have to be very humble and I'll ask her from time to time what she thinks about the way that I'm, you know, treating my kids. Yeah, this strong connection, I guess that you can see with Allah, um, it is real. Like we generally are very close. I'm very close with my with my kids, uh, but massive credit to my wife uh, in that regard. It's, it has not just been me. What WCA event do you hope advances in hardware over the next year more than any other? Hmm, I don't know if many puzzles need like a significant improvement. Probably wouldn't mind if there were more options for maybe clock and square one. What do you think a world populated by clones of you would be like? Oh my gosh. My first response is, oh, that sounds terrible uh, because <laughs> probably be like an instant World War Three and everything would just implode. But I mean, if we got along, I'd like to think that we could start really cool like music bands and yeah, make some really sweet tunes. Do you have any tips on how to teach someone anything? I've been trying to teach my dad how to solve a cube, but I'm a terrible teacher. I also love your vids. <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself. Maybe your dad's a terrible student. I'm just kidding. This is a fun question to answer because as you may know, I'm a high school teacher by trade. I think effective teaching comes down to two things. One, uh, knowing what your student knows and what they don't know. So you're not sort of doing a one size fits all, telling them stuff that they may already know and then maybe not focusing on the things that they do need to know. So yeah, getting to know that the person who's learning, like what they actually need. And the second thing is just a lot of encouragement, like never ever making your student feel dumb or stupid. That never helps anyone learn. So yeah, lots of praise, lots of motivation. People can take all different amounts of time to learn stuff and that's totally fine. So uh, a good teacher, I think, is a teacher who knows their student well and also who's patient, really, really encouraging. What are your thoughts on Timon Kolosinski's ER for both average and single? Will he get world records soon? Timon is incredible. And actually, yes, I would love to go on record and call it right now. Timon will break the world record. I don't know how many competitions he has coming up, but if he's regularly attending competitions I reckon within like three months six months he's gonna break the world record average for sure uh, the single 3.47 you know a little bit trickier given that number but this guy gets threes quite regularly so yes Timon it's just a matter of time hey Ting man I just want to know what method do you use for Mega Minks I have searched a lot and found all L and PLO cases but not the rest of the puzzle and I want to stop solving on beginners method also congrats 200k thank you I don't know how much help you'll get from me since I think I just use beginners method myself 
uh, but I will say that I've gotten a lot of help from Cube Skills, which is Felix's website, YouTube channel, his sort of cubing course. You'd think anything made by Felix would be really well known, but it's actually really underrated. Can you hear my budgie in the background? But yes, Cube Skills has actually several levels of um, Mega Minx tutorials and could be what you're looking for. So yeah, check that out. Uh, some random cabbage asks, would you rather solve a 2121 or a Zeta Minx? Uh, definitely the former. I'm quite a big fan of big cubes. Creative question, what is the color of your toothbrush? That is a very creative question. Uh, currently it is black and yeah, that's not very creative, but hey, it's the truth. How can I make a good video when I have just a normal quality phone with not much memory and no tripod or editing software? You're right, on one hand, quality video is quite dependent on quality equipment. And I do remember when I was a bit younger wishing that I had access to more equipment, that I had a job that I could like earn and um, buy stuff myself. And so as opposed to that, I would say a bit of waiting is involved before you can get better equipment, maybe as a present or um, earn and buy it yourself. But at the same time, all you need to make a video is anything to shoot the video with and something to edit with. That's it. So from your question, you don't need a tripod. You don't need like a ton of memory, although obviously you need a bit. And you don't need an incredible phone. The thing is, everyone had to start somewhere. My very first videos are ones that if I look at them now, I probably won't even recognize them, but I needed to take that first step. And every time I made another video, it would get better maybe by another 1%. And as it goes on and on and on, that's where the quality comes. So make the most with what you have, and I think you'll be amazed at how much you can do. What is your favorite discount code and why is it Ting Boy? Ah, see, I see what you did there. Good one. In the future, do you want Ting Boy and Ola to have their own YouTube channels and why? I'm not sure if it's ultimately my preference. I mean, it would be their choice whether or not they would want to have their own YouTube channels. Certainly for now, because they're quite young, I think it makes a lot of sense that we are all sort of in one channel together and I'm the one, you know, as their dad looking after it. The internet is a big and sometimes scary place for little kids. So I don't think there's anything to rush into, but certainly if they wanted to have their own channels when they were a bit older, then sure. What excites you to wake up in the morning? That's a cool question, daily puzzles. Feeling like I've got meaning in what I do, feeling like I'm making a difference as a teacher, uh, making a difference uh, in the videos that I make, uh, and that I'm making a difference as a husband and as, as a dad. Will you be doing the next Brisbane Cubing Comp? I'm not exactly sure what you mean by doing. I will definitely be attending it. If you mean organizing, um, I don't know, maybe if I'm, if I'm asked. But for sure, any cubing competition in Brisbane, I will be there. How do you manage time? Like you're a YouTuber, a teacher, and you play piano, and you find time to enjoy with your family, which to me is ridiculous. It will be helpful if you give me some tips on managing time and how you manage your time. For starters, I don't think this is something where you can say, I have now successfully managed my time. Like I definitely have a long way to go to get the balance and rhythms of my life right. But for me, I think it's a combination of two things. One, uh, a lot of planning. So as a teacher, obviously, tons of planning there with my lessons and when I'm gonna do what. Uh, and as a YouTuber, uh, which a lot of you already know, I usually have my videos planned out a couple of months in, in advance. And the second thing is, I, I don't think I spend too much time on things that just suck your time. And I guess by that, I mean things like, um, maybe playing games. I've got nothing against playing games. Like I used to play a lot of video games myself, uh, but man, they just suck up your time, right? Like you can easily, easily spend hundreds of hours in a month on like one game. And sure, like, you know, you achieve a lot doing that in game, but outside of the game, it's like, you know, what difference is that actually making to your life? Again, this is very simplified and it's nothing against gaming. I think I've just been quite careful with where I spend my time. I mean, even if someone recommends like a TV series, for example, that's amazing. I'm quite careful with what I'll start watching too, because if there are five seasons, for example, with like 20 episodes in each, I know that starting this is almost like committing, I don't know, 150 hours to this one TV show. And it's like, do I want to commit that much time? So those two reasons I would say is how I manage my time. Uh, Cuba King asks, will you answer this question? Um, yes, I will. What is your favorite Bible translation and preacher? I don't think I have a favorite translation. I grew up reading the New International Version, so that's probably the one that I'm most comfortable with. But I have also read a lot of the Bible in a bunch of other translations, so I don't think it matters too much. As for preacher, yeah, my go-to is always Tim Keller. The C.S. Lewis of our time. I've been very challenged and encouraged uh, by his talk. So yeah, Tim Keller, if you haven't heard of him already. How has your experience been with Felix? I'm assuming you mean Felix Zemdegs. Um, he's a great guy. Everything they say about him is true. Extremely talented and skilled, obviously, but also very humble, just like a real genuine bloke. 
Do you think j will be the first YouTuber to 1 million subs? Uh, there already are YouTubers who have reached a million subs, uh, but j definitely, definitely will, will hit 1 million, and I'll be there rejoicing and celebrating when he does. Who are you? Human, alien, gamer, or nothing? That sort of implies that a gamer is not a human, which is a bit of a strange differentiation to make. Next question. Will... Next question. Will you do a live stream solving the 21 by 21? I will first need to have a 21 by 21. Uh, but if I do, I mean, is this something that you would like to see? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, that will be super fun to do. Uh, but yes, yeah, certainly if you guys want to see that, I'm sure we can make it happen. Which video editor do you use? Have you ever thought about quitting cubing? Uh, I edit all my videos on Adobe Premiere Pro. And no, I don't think I've ever thought about quitting cubing. Uh, I'm, I sometimes think about when I might stop making videos, but I don't think it'll be for a while. And one final question, hopefully it's a good one. Can you solve a cube in tooth? Paste. Hmm. I mean, we do have a video where Ting Boy forced Olo and I to solve cubes that were dunked in like really horrible things like baked beans and honey. So I suppose I could do it in toothpaste as well, but it might be better not to try. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for watching my first ever Guildford challenge. Try it out for yourself if you haven't yet. And genuinely from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for 200,000 subscribers. One fifth of the way to a million, one of you said, which <laughs> I mean, what even is that? My mind cannot comprehend it, but hey, if that's the direction we're going, let's do it. All right, love you guys, see ya.